Well, hello, Park Ridge. I hope you're having a fantastic week. I uh, am so glad for the baptisms we had this past Sunday of uh, teenagers who uh, either had already uh, come to know the Lord earlier in their life or more recently, and they were following through in obedience to Jesus' commands about baptism. Um, if you haven't had a chance to watch that, if you weren't present with us on Sunday or haven't watched the service from this past Sunday, I hope you go online and, and just celebrate with us these young people who are following in obedience to Jesus. Also, uh, this coming Sunday, we're having another baptism at the beach uh, Sunday evening. And so um, we already have set several people who are going to be baptized. It's going to be really exciting. I hope that you'll be able to be there and celebrate um, with your Park Ridge family those, again, who are following Jesus in obedience. Sunday morning promises to be a great day as well. God is doing a great work in our church. A lot of new people are coming. Uh, many of you may have been able to be present with us this past Sunday evening at the Trunk or Treat event. Wow, almost 4,000 people uh, were in attendance. As far as we know, it was hard to keep a good count. I do know we ran out of candy. Uh, we had almost 50 cars decorated, lots of volunteers rolling their sleeves up and making it happen along with staff. And so all of you who served, thank you, thank you, thank you for a wonderful event as we um, served the Lord, served our community, uh, served each other with the good news of Jesus. I want to read for you today from Ephesians chapter 4. We read this same passage as a part of our staff meeting this past Tuesday and uh, yesterday, so I, I just want to read to you the same passage we looked at briefly in our staff meeting. This is Ephesians 4, verses 17 and following. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. That is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. That passage is always a great reminder to me. We are prone to wander, those of us who know Christ. We are prone to allow our selfishness, our pride, our egos, our frustration in certain situations, sort of rule our actions and our words. But, but in this passage, we're reminded, as, as Paul is reminding the Christians in the church at Ephesus, you know, we've, we've put off the old self, and we have put on the new self, the self that is not just informed by God, but filled by the presence of God. And so that, that necessarily paints how we think, how we act, how we react, the words we use, the way we use them how we interact with people that we love and how we interact with people that we don't necessarily have a lot in common with, those that we agree with and those that we don't agree with. Um, but it means that our language is filled with grace, our hearts are filled with grace. And, and mostly that's because we have recognized the incredible amount of forgiveness that God has bestowed on us. So my encouragement to you today, as it is every week, Run hard toward Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. If you don't yet know Jesus and you're watching this video, I hope you'll reach out to us. We would love to talk with you more about what it means to be a Christian. 
one who has been filled with the presence of God, forgiven because of the cross of Christ, and given new hope, a future, and a purpose because of the glory of God in us, through us, and in spite of us. May God richly bless you the balance of this week and um, hope that you will come this Sunday to worship God in spirit and in truth. God bless you.